Hey, welcome back to Bridal Sewing Techniques. And today we're gonna to talk about how to add support to a sheath wedding gown. So early one morning when you arrive at your studio, you find out that your challenge for the day is a double D bride, who has bought a sheath gown that has no boning, no bust pads, and only a tool back on the gown, which really might as well be backless. How are you gonna solve this problem? This girl needs support and quick. challenge we need to add support to a sheath wedding gown which basically is a redesign we're gonna have to put in push-up pads and long line boning we're gonna have to strengthen the straps and then finally we're gonna have to line the back with power mesh now power mesh comes in a lot of different colors um, so you might want to have a stash of different flesh tones and ivory you can see this tool was already ripping when we started this project. So adding a back is gonna be super important. All right, so this is what the gown is made of. It's pretty much just like a knit lining and then a lace overlay. The lace is appliqued onto tool. So as you can see when I pull on it, there is no boning at all in this gown. This gown, um, whenever you see a gown that has no boning and has straps, you can know that it was designed to drape. It's not designed to support. So what I would first do, of course, is call the bridal shop that it came from and let them know that, that the salesperson does need to know. And of course, you would want to make sure you already have a relationship with this bridal shop. It'd be rude if you didn't. But just let them know that the salesperson needs to know that someone who's busty needs support and they really don't need a sheath gown unless they can wear undergarments under it. So what I've done here is I have cut some boning out and I have basted it to the lining. This lining I can actually uh, kind of tunnel up through it and I can actually get the dress into the sewing machine. So that's awesome. I can actually sew the boning down to this knit lining, but it does need to be fairly thoroughly basted first so that it doesn't move around on me and so that the bones are perfectly symmetrical because sometimes they do imprint a little bit on the outside and you want to make sure they look good if that were to happen. So I'm just going to kind of zoom over this a little bit. You can see some of my basting stitches are still in there but that's no big deal. So we've sewn the boning in and it goes from usually about two or three inches below the natural waist so that it's locking on the hips and goes all the way up to the top of the bodice. Now we're going to sew in the push-up cups. A lot of times I only tack these in, like with four tacks per cup, but with this situation, these really need to support her. So I'm going to very thoroughly sew these in all the way around the push-up pad. You can see I like to get a good strong long needle and I tunnel through the stitches that surround the bust pad. And it's just a really secure way to hold these pads down so that they can offer her as much support as possible. Of course, I have this going two or three times faster than real life just to speed things along. And you'll notice several of the clips in this video are like that. All right, so now we're gonna put the power mesh in the back. You can see where the tool is already starting to rip. This is not a special strong tool at all. This is a very, very lightweight tool. Um, it's really not meant to have much responsibility at all. Like I said, the dress was designed to drape. So, the power mesh that this bride picked is actually an ivory. So she's gonna have an ivory back on her gown. 
but some brides will choose a flesh tone color. So that's why I was saying it would be good for you to have a variety of flesh tone colors in stock at all times. And I usually describe this as like figure skater fabric to the brides when they're not exactly sure what we're going to be lining their gown with. Now there's two different ways that you can cut this power mesh out. Um, you can lay it on the outside or lay it on the inside. It doesn't really matter. So what I did was I'm going to cut it out and pin it down and baste it um, one way. And then on the other side, I'm going to flip it and do it the other way so that you can kind of see which way you would prefer. And here I'm just generally cutting around the shape that we're going to need. And those pins are not permanent. Uh, I'm not going to sew anything with the pins the way they are. It's just to stabilize the power mesh while I cut. So I'm going to cut this out and then I'm going to flip it over onto the power mesh fabric and cut out a mirror piece of it. So that way we have the back left and the back right. And then next you'll see I'm going to pin it down nice and smooth. I'm going to baste it down and then I'm going to machine sew it down. Here we go. presser foot so that there's no pressure so that I can sew right over the beads 
um, I'm going to want my needle to strike between the beads. Every now and then, my needle is going to accidentally hit a bead. Um, now I'm using a size 18 needle. The reason why I mentioned that it's going to accidentally hit a bead is whenever you're doing free motion stitching over or machine stitching at all over or around some beads, you want to make sure either A, you wear glasses so your eyes are protected, or B, you can put on some type of just a clear non-prescription safety glasses um, because pretty much it's going to be almost like shards of glass flying at you um, when you shatter a bead. I have thankfully um, never gotten any shards in my eyes, but I do also always wear glasses. So again, I'm just going to slowly work my way through trying to get this stitch between the beads. And then I'm going to kind of loop along these buttons here. This is probably the trickiest part to sew, is in and out and looping around the buttons. Here I'm going to change my presser foot. Using the left invisible zipper foot is just going to help me get in between the buttons a little bit better. And then some of you probably use a tailor's awl to keep the buttons out of the way while you sew, but since I have my screwdriver there um, for changing the feet and the needles and so forth, I just go ahead and use the screwdriver to push them out of the way. So first I'm going to run along beside them with more of a straight stitch, and then I'm going to take a second pass where I actually go in between the buttons. inches or so you're gonna drop that presser foot and just go ahead and lock your stitch um, because when you're free motioning there's not a lot of tension on that bobbin thread so every now and then you need to lock it and get it a little bit tighter all right so what I'm gesturing here is I need to go through and cut all this extra power mesh out so that you can see the open work of the lace Okay, and here's where I was talking about earlier, where I was gonna show you how to uh, pin and baste the power mesh from the opposite side of the fabric. Some of you are gonna prefer to pin top side, some are gonna prefer bottom side. I personally prefer pinning top side, even though it takes a little longer to get the fabric perfectly smooth. Just because if you pin bottom side, you do have to go through and pin twice. Um, because you pin it and then you flip it and then you pin it again and then you take out the other pins because I like to be able to see the pins um, I sew top side and I like to see see where the pins are so here I'm gonna go around um, like I was gesturing a few minutes ago 
and um, I'm going to cut out all the extra power mesh. I'm using applique scissors. As you can see, they have that paddle on the lower side that's gonna, you know, help prevent you accidentally picking up extra fabrics on the bottom side. You still can do that, so you do still need to pay attention. I wouldn't 100% rely on that paddle. And now I'm gonna do a row of straight stitch along those straight beads uh, because there doesn't need to be any stretch in that tool at all. And now where we stitched around the buttons, you can see the stitches and it's not very pretty. This bride likes a lot of bling. So she added, had us add some bling to her back and we did that on both sides, both sides of the buttons. And it turned out quite pretty. And here's what the back of the gown looks like. You can tell this gown is very supportive now. Please like, share, and subscribe. It means the world to me. Thank you.